Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Good morning, and welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. The music for today will be provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Trudy Schmaltz. Our guest speaker today is the Reverend James Kramer, pastor of Christ Memorial Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Your liturgist is Pastor Thomas Schmidt of St. John's Lutheran Church in Glendale, Wisconsin. Today's hymns from the Lutheran Service Book are numbers 331, 343, and 350. Today's sermon topic is based on a text from Luke, the 19th chapter, verses 28 to 40. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, are the words of a common table prayer we say before eating. This prayer is also a wonderful way to begin the season of Advent as we anticipate the celebration of the coming of Jesus at Christmas. Stay tuned as we hear Pastor James Kramer give the sermon, Come, Lord Jesus. Now we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lutheran Radio Choir will sing the hymn 331, The Advent of Our King. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson for the first Sunday in Advent is from the 33rd chapter of Jeremiah, verses 14 through 16. 
Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite your attention to the reading of the gospel, which will also serve as the text of this morning's sermon from St. Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. And when Jesus had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as it had been told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Here ends the reading. Let us boldly confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Immediately after the choir has sung the hymn 343, Prepare the Royal Highway, the Reverend James Kramer, pastor of Christ Memorial Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, will speak on the theme, Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed. Those are the words of a table prayer that many say before they are about to eat. It is a prayer asking Jesus to be our dinner guest 
and acknowledging the food of this meal as gifts from God that are a blessing to us. I must confess, however, that when I say this prayer, I more often than not am thinking about what I'm about to eat rather than thinking about the one whom I am inviting to be my guest. Yet it is a good prayer and a wonderful way to begin any meal. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. This prayer is also a wonderful way to begin the season of Advent. The word Advent means to come. The one whose coming we are thinking about during this Advent season is Jesus. We think about his coming to us as a baby on that first Christmas. We think about his coming again on the last day to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. Our gospel lesson for today, however, does not lead us to think either about Christmas or the last day. Luke describes for us Jesus' Palm Sunday entrance into Jerusalem. What does that have to do with Advent? Jerusalem was the center of the religious world of the Jews. This was the city that David made the capital of his United Kingdom of Israel. This was the city where his son, King Solomon, built the great temple to the Lord God. The temple of Solomon had been destroyed by the Babylonian ruler Nebuchadnezzar. However, a more magnificent temple had been built by King Herod the Great. It is true that the Jews no longer ruled themselves. They were under the control of the Roman Empire, yet they still had their temple and still had the hope that the Lord God would come to save them. Even though the Jewish people were scattered all over the world, they would still come to Jerusalem on the festival days to worship the Lord God and offer him sacrifices at the temple. Jesus had been to Jerusalem a number of times. Soon after he was born, Jesus was taken to the temple in Jerusalem by Mary and Joseph. They were following the law of the Lord that every firstborn son must be consecrated to the Lord with an offering of a pair of doves or two young pigeons. When Jesus was 12 years old, he was taken by his parents to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. The young Jesus went to the temple and sat among the great rabbis of Judaism, listening to their teachings and asking them questions. When asked by his mother Mary, who had not known for three days where Jesus was, why he was at the temple, Jesus replied that he had to be about his father's business. This Palm Sunday was not the first time that Jesus had come to Jerusalem. However, it was the most important time he had come to Jerusalem. This time Jesus was coming to Jerusalem to do the work that God the Father had sent him to do. This is why he had come into the world. Jesus' disciples did not really understand why Jesus had come into the world or why he was coming into Jerusalem. Yes, it was approaching the Feast of Passover. This is a time when Jews came to Jerusalem to celebrate the deliverance of Israel from their slavery in Egypt. Jesus often came to Jerusalem during the Feast of the Passover. But this time was different. The disciples knew that Jesus had enemies in Jerusalem who wanted to do him harm. Jesus had predicted that the next time he would come into Jerusalem, he would be arrested and put to death by his enemies. The disciples must have wondered why Jesus would come to Jerusalem if it was so dangerous for him to be there. Yet, dangerous or not, Jesus wanted to come. He told two of his disciples to go into Bethany and untie a young colt that was there and bring it to him. Would this not be stealing? No, Jesus said. If anyone asks you why you are untying the colt, simply say that the Lord has need of it, and it will be okay. The disciples brought the colt to Jesus, put their cloaks on the colt, and sat Jesus on it. Then Jesus came into Jerusalem. Yes, his followers knew that this was dangerous, but they were swept up in the joy of Jesus coming to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives for the feast of the Passover. They threw their cloaks on the ground in honor of Jesus. They began to loudly praise God for all of the miracles they had witnessed Jesus do. Together, they said the words of Psalm 118, verse 26, 
Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Then they added the words, Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. These were the words that the angel said to the shepherds the night that Jesus was born. Jesus had captured the hopes of his followers that God was coming to Jerusalem to bring peace and glory to God's people. But not everyone was happy with the coming of Jesus. Luke writes that some of the Pharisees who were watching Jesus ride into Jerusalem were upset with the reception Jesus was receiving. Perhaps they were jealous at the popularity of Jesus. More likely, they were afraid that the Roman authorities would witness this grand procession and get the idea that Jesus was leading an uprising against Rome and then respond with violence against the Jews and their leaders. So the Pharisees told Jesus to quiet his followers. Jesus, however, was pleased with the reception he was receiving. He answered the Pharisees, If my followers were silent about my coming, then the stones would cry out. The Pharisees were upset with Jesus because they did not understand the reason for his coming into Jerusalem or the reason he had come into our world. Jesus had not come to lead a rebellion against Rome. He had come to fulfill a promise that God had made centuries before through his prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah wrote, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. What was this promise of God that Jesus had come to fulfill? God said, In those days I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. What did God mean by that? Jesus would come from the family tree of King David, the king who had made Jerusalem the capital of Israel and the city of God. Jesus would come to bring righteousness to people who were plagued by sin, people who were separated from God, people who were headed for eternal destruction. Jesus would be our righteousness because he is the Holy Son of God. He had come to give us his holiness and take our sins on him. The cheering on that first Palm Sunday would soon be replaced by crowds of people calling for Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus would be arrested by his enemies, as he had told his disciples. But his death would be the means by which the peace that his followers had hoped for would come to them. As the prophet Isaiah had written, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus had come to Jerusalem to suffer and die for us on the cross so that we might have peace with God and experience the glory of God in his heavenly kingdom. On that first Palm Sunday, Jesus was the king who was coming in the name of the Lord. He was the king whom the prophet Zechariah said was coming with salvation. He was the righteous branch from the line of King David, whom the prophet Jeremiah said will be called, The Lord is our salvation. What does all of this mean for us as we begin the mad rush of Christmas preparations? We all know that for many people, Christmas is not much of a religious holiday. It is a pleasant holiday filled with lights, presents, decorations, parties, festive foods, family gatherings, and so much more. Christians enjoy these things too, and there is nothing wrong with that. But the temptation is to make Christmas all about these things and forget the spiritual importance of Christmas. That is where the season of Advent can be so helpful. Advent reminds us that Christmas is about Jesus coming to our world, coming to be our Savior. Using the days of Advent to recall the prophecies from the Old Testament, promising the coming of a Savior, prepares us to celebrate the birth of Jesus. In fact, what better Advent prayer could there be than that common table prayer, Come, Lord Jesus! 
There are so many distractions that threaten to crowd out Jesus, who desires to come to us and fill our Christmas with his gifts of righteousness, salvation, and peace. It is good for us to pray, come Lord Jesus. Come to us in the busyness of our Christmas preparations. Come to us as you came on that first Christmas. Come to us as you came into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. Be our guest, our most special guest, and let the spiritual gifts that you offer us, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of the righteousness of God, the gift of salvation, the gift of peace, peace with God and peace with others, the gift of glory in the eternal kingdom of God. Let these gifts be a blessing to us. The material gifts of Christmas that we open on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day soon lose their luster. But the gifts that Jesus comes and brings to us are special and fill us with joy forever. Christmas celebrates the coming of Jesus to be our Savior. Advent prepares us to celebrate his coming to us as a baby in Bethlehem. But Advent also reminds us that Jesus is coming again. We were promised on the day that Jesus ascended into heaven that he would come back in the same way that he went up to heaven. Jesus said at the end of the book of Revelation, yes, I am coming soon. That is the promise of the end of the world. Are you ready for that? All you need in order to be ready is faith in Jesus as your loving Savior. The Apostle Paul said that the glorious return of our Savior Jesus Christ is a blessed hope that we eagerly wait for. So, to Jesus' promise, yes, I am coming soon, our reply is, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Lord Jesus Christ, giver and perfecter of our faith, we thank and praise you for continuing among us the preaching of your gospel for our instruction and edification. Send your blessing upon the word which has been spoken to us, and by your Holy Spirit increase our saving knowledge of you, that day by day we may be strengthened in the divine truth and remain steadfast in your grace. Give us strength to fight the good fight and by faith to overcome all the temptations of Satan, the flesh, and the world so that we may finally receive the salvation of our souls. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We trust in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
As we celebrate more than 87 years of broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'd love to send you a special free gift from our ministry to your home. And as always, you can receive a copy of today's sermon. All you have to do is simply write to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, pre-recorded at Trinity Freistadt Lutheran Church in Mequon, Wisconsin. Today's music was provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Trudy Schmaltz. The message, Come Lord Jesus, was given by the Reverend James Kramer, pastor of Christ Memorial Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Your liturgist has been Pastor Thomas Schmidt of St. John's Lutheran Church in Glendale, Wisconsin. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close the service by singing the final hymn, 350, Come, Thou Precious Ransom, Come. Come, Thou Precious Ransom, Come, Holy Hope for sinful mortals. Come, O Savior of the world, open our to the portals. Come, Thy beauty let us see, anxiously we wait for Thee. Enter now, my waiting heart, glorious King and Lord most holy. Dwell in me and ne'er depart, though I am but poor and lowly. The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.